Well, good afternoon. Uh, I'm a master student from Portugal, and the title of my talk is Why Globisetus Iberus, a fossil big dwell, has a bony sphere inside its head. Well, big dwells, or zephids, are deep divers. They are animals that can go to 200 meters to hunt and spend four hours without coming to breathe. They use echolocation to hunt their prey, normally squid, because in deep death, it's the only way they can see. They have few or no teeth. They sometimes have two tusks on the lower jaw, and they are sexual dimorphic, which means that they have traits that are, com that are not common to both sex. They also suffer for s from something called pachyosteosclerosis of the bone, which is the substitution of uh, the more, more spongious bone by compact bone. Well, this will help reflect some of the waves of the echolocation. They have very complex apparatus in their head that help them echolocate. They have the phonic lips on the top of their head near the blowhole, which allows, by the passage of the, of the air, it vibrates and then it uh, trans transmits the echolocating waves. Well, they have also some soft tissues that are very important, like the melon. They have the spermaceti organ, like sperm whales, and they have the connected tissue called teca that holds everything together. Well, if you think about the skull, for example, Mesopodomirus there, which is an excellent whale, it is alive today. What would be the worst thing that you could do to that skull if it, that animal depends on echolocation to find prey. Well, one of the worst things you could do is put something in front of the echolocating waves. And well, that's exactly what happens with Globisetus iberus, and that's why it's so bizarre. Well, it has that huge sphere on the top of the head, right in front of the supposed uh, echolocating apparatus. So to tell you a little bit about the fossil, it was found near the coast of Portugal, um, near Paniche, and it was fished out by fishermen, by real fishermen, by something called trolling fishing. It, they have these big hooks and they troll the ocean floor and out came Globicetus. And as, as I was saying, if you try to put everything together inside its head, it doesn't really work because he has that sphere right in front of the, the echolocation, echolocating sounds produced in the phonic lips. To be a little bit like you trying to talk to your friend shouting with a high rise in front of you. It wouldn't probably work very well, right? Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. Why does Lobisetus has that sphere inside his head? It must have a purpose. So I came up with seven hypotheses. Well, when you first look at it, the first thing you think is, okay, it's a malformation, it's, it's a tumor. It's very bizarre and unique. But if you analyze other fossils from Globicetus iberus, well, they have similar bulges, almost identical. And they have very smooth edges, and they are very symmetrical. And, and well, they have this innervation canal still preserved, and they are not cut off at the base. So that tells us that it shouldn't be a tumor. Another one is that it could be for headbutting. Well, headbutting is common in various groups of animals, and even zephids have been found to headbutt, slightly headbutt each other, and even scar. They do scarring uh, between fighting and male, male fighting. But there's something interesting about this, is that the hypermineralized bones, when fractured, the fractures will propagate very quickly. And if that happened to the animal, well, it will not be very healthy. So another one is, it could be a ballast. It could serve for the animal to reduce its buoyancy, as, as he is a deep, a deep diver. And he would uh, passively maintain a vertical position while going to hunt. Well, but there's something about it. The energy that he would save by going so fast to its hunting ground will be lost when he, he, had, he has come to the surface to breathe, right? So that will not compensate everything. Another one is that it could increase the velocity of the sound waves. Well, hard bones improve signal conduction. Uh, but there's something called dependence mismatch, or ultrasonic conduction. And it's a little bit like if you have 
like in the first color I show you, in nowadays uh, zephids, the sun goes through soft tissue to water, and while the densities are almost the same, so it doesn't lose its velocity of the sun rays. But if you have something that goes through soft tissue to hard bone and then to water, well, it will increase a lot when it hits hard bone because it's uh, a very stiff material, and then it would lose its velocity when it hit the water because of the density mismatch. So why not be a reflective or directional aim for the sound beam? Well, the density disparity in the head would be a good reflector because you have the soft tissue and the hard bone and maybe it would help reflect some of the sound. But, uh, and they are deep divers and they cannot use air field ducts when they dive for acoustic reflection. So they use non-compressive tissue and this non-compressive tissue could be the bulge. And, but the, as I said, having something anteriorly, anteriorly to the echolocation production should not be a very good advantage because it should block out a lot of sounds. And well, if it blocks a lot of sounds, why not this be the primary use? Well, zephids, they echolocate, the, the sound goes through the head, it catches the animal, the prey, and comes back to the animal through the lower jaw or the pan bone. It goes through the pan bone and to the hearing complex. Well, the bulge could be a way of trying to redirect some of those signals. But zephids already have that. They have these uh, airfield sinuses that are acoustic mirrors around their ears. So this shouldn't be the primary use. Another one is that it could be a, sexual, a secondary sexual organ, as proposed by Goldin in 2014. Well, he stated that these animals, they, as they can three, recognize three-dimensional images, they would be able to detect the shape inside each other's heads. And in deep death, this was the, it would be a very good advantage to maybe see, uh, to distinguish sex, age, and even different males. And now I want you to imagine something real quick. Imagine that you lived in a jungle. And that jungle, I mean, it rained a lot. And there are a lot of trees, and you're being hunted by tigers. Well, what would be the worst thing, the worst trait that you could possibly have? Well, one of the worst traits that you could possibly have in a jungle is a giant tail. And yet, the peacock has one. And why? Because the females love it. The lady peacocks love the male peacock's tail. And why? Because it shows them that even in such a harsh environment, that peacock is able to survive against all odds. And that's the male they want, the strongest one. And what if that's the case of Globicetus iberus? What if the sphere is not a sun transmitter, but just a display object? Well, how will we test all this? We are building 3D models of Globicetus, and we are going to try to model the soft tissue in its head. And by the placing of the phonic clips, and by using excellent frequencies from zephids that live now, we will try to test how the waves and the bulge will interact with each other. I would like to finish with the question that I started. So why does Globus Atlas has the sphere inside this head? Well, if any of you has the, question, the answer to that, you can email me to my personal address, <laughs> um, or you can come and study paleontology in Portugal with me. I'll leave you some information, and later on I can give you some more if you want. And I would like to finish by thanking the SVP for the travel grant that they gave me so I could be here uh, presenting for all of you, and to Musa de Lourinha and to all my colleagues there, and to my supervisor, uh, paleontology, paleontologist Octavio Mateus, for giving me the opportunity to study this amazing animal. Thank you very much. <laughs>